So thank you very much for waiting. Sorry to keep you waiting. The uh, uh, President-elect was just being greeted by the, the member states. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce the President-elect of the General Assembly for the 72nd session, His Excellency Miroslav Lajcek. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning. Thank you for coming. I've just been elected president of the 72nd session of the General Assembly of the United Nations. It's a great honor and even greater responsibility for me. I'm bringing in this job my almost 30 years of experience as a professional diplomat. I've served in many national and also international positions. I've always believed strongly in multilateralism with the United Nations at the very center of it. And I want to use my mandate when I take over from the current president to strengthen the role of the United Nations. We live in difficult times, and therefore I, be, I, I believe we need a UN more than ever, and we need a strong and efficient United Nations. I spoke about my priorities. The first among them is the people. We must never forget that all we do is to serve the people of this planet, and therefore to strive for focus on people and strive for peace and decent life for all on a sustainable planet must be the overarching priority for all of us. Then it's the peace and prevention. Uh, that's my priority as a professional diplomat. I really believe that uh, we shall invest more in preventing conflict and thus saving human lives and also saving money. And uh, there is one uh, important event that is already mandated for April next year, which we want to use to strengthen the role of, of uh, or strengthen the importance of sustaining peace and preventing conflicts. Migration is another uh, priority. We have to deliver on the migration compact, so this will be one of the most urgent issues during the 72nd session. Next one is to, to stay focused and keep the speed and attention when it comes to the implementation of sustainable development goals and also climate change. Next priority is the human rights, the respect for basic rights and dignity of every human being. And this is an overarching principle that must be reflected in everything we do. And uh, the final point I made was on quali quality. I'm not bringing agenda on my own. There is so much to do already, and I have inherited a full working schedule, so I want to make sure that instead of overburdening uh, the agenda, particularly for smaller states, we will focus on doing well what we are expected to do. So uh, this is the philosophy with which I uh, am entering into, into this job. Obviously, uh, it will not start before September, and until then I uh, want to express my full and strong support to the current president, uh, Mr. Peter Thompson, and I also want to stress that uh, he has been very generous and very helpful in organizing the transition because uh, both he himself and myself uh, understand how important it is the continuity of the work of the office of the President of the General Assembly and uh, I hope you will see this continuity. Absolutely. We've got time for a few questions. Why don't we start over? Okay. Uh, President of the General Assembly elect, congratulations. I'm Margaret Bashir with Voice of America. My question to you is uh, today it's becoming much more widely expected that President Trump will pull out of the Paris Climate Agreement. What would be your message to the administration in anticipation of this announcement? I hear the rumors, but I don't want to com comment on rumors at this point. Uh, climate agenda is extremely important. Extremely, it's a it's a uh, issue of survival for a number of uh, UN member states, and I spoke about climate as one of the priorities. Uh, I believe that uh, Paris Agreement has been one of the biggest successes of the international community lately, and uh, we shall implement that. And I was encouraged by the words of the U.S. permanent representative today, after my election. She, she expressed her commitment to work very closely with me on all the issues, and I'm very much looking forward to, to, to do the same. Hi, my name is Shauna McGee from Kyoto News. I'd like to ask you for a little bit of elaboration on your comments about U.N. Security Council reform, which were quite exciting. You talked about transforming the Security Council into a 21st century body and working together to push forward the 2005 World Summit. That World Summit, as we all know, was 10 years ago. Not much progress has been made. So what concrete measures, what vision, how do you plan to make a real change? Thank you. Uh, the issue of the Security Council reform is clearly on the table and it's also one of the most widely uh, followed by, by 
by the world leaders and by the general public. Uh, therefore, uh, I'm ready uh, to continue working on this agenda. Uh, we all need to adjust. We, need to, we all need, have to evolve. Uh, at the same time, the talks are going on, and uh, I still will be wait, waiting for what am I going to inherit uh, from the 71st uh, General Assembly session to continue the work. Thank you, Mr. Minister. My name is Olga Denisova with uh, Yanovosti Russian News Agency. Uh, I just want to clarify, as I understand you plan to stay uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of your country, so how will you cooperate with both position, positions? Uh, during my mandate as a, as a President of the General Assembly, I will only have one identity, which will be the President of the General Assembly. I'll uh, uh, be s replaced in uh, operational activities of the Foreign Ministry by my deputies. We have made the arrangement, so uh, I w you will only see me acting and speaking uh, in the capacity of the President of the General Assembly. Thank you. My name is Abdul Hamid. I am from Al Quds Al Arabi, and I have two questions one on Palestine. I start with that. On 29th November 2017, there will be 70 years from the partition plan, which promised to create two states. One is there, it is Israel, and Palestine is still waiting. Do you have any ideas about how to bring that resolution 70 years ago to fruition today? The second, there are many items that the Security Council had infringed on the work of the uh, assembly, just like, for example, uh, poverty, water, uh, roots of conflict, women issues. Traditionally, these uh, items were discussed in the General Assembly. Why uh, the Security Council is infringing on the work of the General Assembly, and can you do something about it? Thank you very much. I don't think I shall comment on the work of the Security Council, as I've just been elected the President of the General Assembly, and I fully respect the, the UN Charter and the role of different UN bodies. When it comes to the Palestinian issue, obviously I'm very well aware of the importance and sensitivity of this issue, and I wish to see the peace dialogue to be restarted between Israel and Palestine, because this is the best platform for solving this problem and obviously subsequently all the other problems relating to it. So I, I believe in peaceful uh, solution. I really believe in, in the dialogue and I really hope that we will uh, see this uh, restarted and I wish to see uh, the United Nations playing a role and contributing to this process. Thank you. Uh, congratulations. My name is Ali Barada from France 24 and an Nahar newspaper in Lebanon. Uh, my question is a follow-up on Maggie Bashir's uh, question on climate change. Would you please elaborate what you like to do uh, during your term for uh, next year uh, regarding climate change uh, to, uh, to raise awareness uh, about the issue and uh, more action from the United Nations and uh, from the international community? Thank you. I believe the issue of climate is one of the issues where the United Nations has uh, done a very good job. It's uh, high on the agenda. It's high on the list of priorities of, for the United Nations. Paris Climate Agreement has been a clear success. So what we need to do is to implement and to move forward the process. Uh, climate is also one of the 17 uh, sustainable development goals. So we need to stay focused. We need to implement. And we need to raise the awareness because uh, for some countries it might be an academic issue, but for other countries, it's a matter of survival. And that's, it's, it's important that this is understood by everyone. Very good. All right, well, thank you very much. I think we've got time for... The John Ash case. In the John Ash case, it was shown that the office of the PGA didn't disclose monies that came in without, with all due respect, may rest in peace. What do you have, what, do you intend to disclose who pays for your travel, who pays for your staff, and to try to get it codified through the General Assembly during the abs year? Abs Thanks. Absolutely. The, the highest possible standards of transparency and accountability are among my priorities. And my, the current president and his predecessor have done a very good job in this regard, and I am going to continue with that. There will be no secrets. Right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very all much. the best. Bye-bye. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you.